Pete Thamp, ESPN College Football Insider, put out an article titled Realignment Chatter, How the Pac-12 Holds the Key to It All. Now, first off, uh, I do find it a little odd that an ESPN reporter is covering this topic. Uh, Because, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't there a little bit of a conflict of interest hovering around this subject? Like, ESPN has right deals with both the Pac-12 currently and the Big 12, who everyone seems to believe is is going to be a big beneficiary if the Pac-12 splits apart. Like, ESPN is also... Uh, rumored to be one of the only potential partners still involved in the current Pac-12 media rights negotiation. Uh, But alas, you know, let's start off with a little bit of Thamel's article here. Uh, What's the most apparent after interviews with industry and campus sources over the past week is how that financial gap between the SEC and Big Ten and everyone else is going to cause further unrest. It's safe to say that schools in the Power Two are going to be making more than $30 million more than teams in the other leagues now and going forward. Uh, He did say the Big 12 is at least safely established in the upper middle class after agreeing to a recent deal with the SBN and Fox. Uh, Now, the only variable is time, and the next significant trigger could emerge in the coming weeks when the Pac-12 schools find out what their television deal could look like. Now, Thamel is right on this, right? We have to figure out what's going on with that TV deal. It's not like they won't get one. Every conference has some kind of TV deal. The question is whether or not it's going to be enough money to keep the Pac-12 schools at least somewhat competitive on a national level. Uh, This quote from the article said, If Klyovkov has something up his sleeve, it's with some entity that no one knows about. An industry source told them. And and that's concerning because it's not just about finances for the Pac-12 schools. It's also about visibility because... Playing games exclusively on a streaming service is not going to help promote the brands of these universities. Here's here's the most, or excuse me, the most basic way to explain this. Linear television, whether network like ABC or Fox or cable like ESPN or FS1, gets your brand in front of people that might not be looking for it. Like it's easy to get to. Now on a streamer, whether that's Amazon or Apple, uh, the brand has to be fully established and people have to be searching for it. On streaming, There are so many options and so many steps to get to a game that really only diehards are going to go seek it out. Now, John Wilner from the Mercury News, he does the Pac-12 hotline. He interviewed Kirk Schultz, Washington State president, about all of this. Uh, Schultz stated, my sense is we need to get it done in March, in mid-March, hopefully, talking about the media rights deal. Uh, He also stated, while some schools have a bit of trepidation about what the deal will look like, he doesn't feel at all like anyone is spiraling off into places of despair. I I will go ahead and tell you this. I would feel a lot better about Wilner's interview if it had come from an AD or a president at one of the other Pac-12 schools that has options, right? Washington State is not going to be taken by the Big 12 or the Big 10. Like, at, at best, Washington State, if everything falls apart, Washington State will likely go to the Mountain West, I guess. But either way, let's carry on with Thamel's article. Thamel goes through uh, to ask whether or not there's a long-term solution for the Pac-12, which he says hinges on Oregon and Washington. Now, I can't disagree with him on that. Oregon and Washington will leave if given a better option like the Big Ten. There's nothing the Pac-12 could do in a financial sense at this point to keep Oregon and Washington not only happy, but competitive on the broader national landscape. Now, it really depends on whether or not those universities want to invest heavily in athletics or if they just want to focus on academics, right? Because they're in a fantastic conference as far as the academic side is concerned. Now, he does point out something interesting here about how things play out from this point, and that is how bizarre it is that the future of a century-old conference could hinge on Amazon, which is a streaming service that has never broadcast a college game of any significance. Like, this was interesting in the article. It said, Don't expect anything significant to happen with the Big Ten and Amazon until outgoing Commissioner Kevin Warren officially leaves office, which is scheduled for April. Would a media partner want to deal with an outgoing commissioner? Probably not, especially because Amazon was involved in the original Big Ten negotiations and ultimately left out. But the potential of new leadership combined with the increasing desperation of Oregon and Washington has cracked the door back open. The Big Ten presidents were not keen on more additions initially, and both USC and UCLA have been protective of the West Coast. But could properties that valuable really get left behind? Now, it's a strange concept. I brought this up before, but the idea that Oregon and Washington might take less money from the Big Ten in order to secure their athletic futures is not completely outlandish, right? Especially considering less money from the Big Ten would likely still be more than what they could get with the Pac-12. However, going back to that Wilner article, the Washington State President Schultz stated that unless the additional money from another conference is overwhelming, like it was with USC and UCLA, what the school presidents are looking for is things like the location of the alumni base, the region from which school draw or which the school will draw applicants, uh, rivalries, and opportunities for competitive success. Put a pin in that. He reiterated that winning matters, which is 100% true, uh, will Washington and Oregon 
really want to go to the Big Ten, but get stuck with like four plus losses every year and and do a whole lot of traveling for their other sports? Or would it be beneficial to be the top dog in a smaller conference for, you know, a little less money or maybe a lot less? What makes the most sense for these schools in the Pac-12? Like that's for them to decide. The only thing that's going to give us any kind of closure on this, uh, on the media rights deal is, you know, when this thing gets announced in the next month or so, maybe month and a half. Um, and, and then we got to figure out how long the grant of rights is going to be. Like it's, it, we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening with it. Psst. Hey. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and of course, jump in the comments. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE, and the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.